Corregidor is a name that resonates with Americans like Singapore does to the British, both places being the sites of last-ditch battles against the invading Japanese in 1942. Corregidor is a rocky tadpole-shaped island located at the entrance to Manila Bay in Luzon in the Philippines. Studded with military buildings and old gun batteries, the Americans had used the island to defend Manila Bay from attacks from the sea. During the Japanese invasion of the Philippines in December 1941 and the resultant U.S. retreat into the nearby Bataan Peninsula, Corregidor had been used as a last-ditch defense position by the beleaguered American and Filipino forces after the surrender on the mainland, its underground tunnels being used as a hospital and shelter. By the 4th of May 1942, the island's guns had all been knocked out. And then the Japanese launched an amphibious assault against the ferocious defenders. The island surrendered shortly afterwards. Turning the clock forward three years, and it was the turn of the Americans to attempt to capture Japanese-occupied Corregidor during General Douglas MacArthur's reconquest of the Philippines. The Japanese garrison, numbering 6,700 troops, could be expected to fight to the death. MacArthur decided to try to recapture Corregidor using a combined amphibious assault and parachute landing, the latter being extremely risky as Corregidor is only five square miles in size and mountainous, with precipitous cliffs leading down to a few well-defended beaches and coves. The paratroopers intended to land on Topside, the island's dominant terrain feature, Topside had to be taken, as from its lofty heights, the Japanese could fire down on all the amphibious landing sites. The U.S. top brass figured that the Japanese wouldn't expect them to try a parachute drop on such a small target. The airborne element of the operation was assigned to the veteran 503rd Parachute Regimental Combat Team under Lieutenant Colonel George M. Jones while the amphibious landings would be conducted by the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, 24th Infantry Division. The drop would be conducted from an altitude of only 500 feet to enable the paratroopers to avoid being blown off the small island into the sea and to limit their time in the air and result in exposure to Japanese ground fire. But at 500 feet, no reserve parachutes would be worn. The men wouldn't have had time to use them before hitting the ground. As with other Pacific Island campaigns, a long period of explosive preparation was made before the invasion commenced. This involved liberally plastering the island with bombs. U.S. aircraft dumped 595 tons of munitions on Corregidor between the 23rd of January and the 16th of February 1945. On the 13th of February, the U.S. Navy joined in, cruisers and destroyers bombarding the island in an attempt to knock out Japanese defensive positions, though several U.S. warships were hit by Japanese fire. The assault was set for the morning of the 16th of February. At sunrise, B-24 Liberators plastered the island one last time. Then Douglas A-20s raced in low to strafe and bomb. By now, the U.S. paratroopers were approaching Corregidor in their C-47 transports. Conditions were hardly ideal over the drop zones, with winds of 16 to 18 knots, and the small landing zones meant that the C-47s would have to make multiple passes, with only eight men from each aircraft jumping each time. On average, each C-47 made three passes over the island under fire to disgorge its full load of paratroopers. Because of the small targets, only eight men at a time are dropped on each of the three runs. the golf course.
course and the parade grounds on the rocky plateau known as Topside. Landing fields are next to the sites of our barracks and headquarters buildings destroyed during the siege in 1942. A number of paratroopers are dropped short of their targets and go over the cliffs. They climb down to the beaches where they're picked up by PT boats. The objective of the landing is to secure the plateau as one arm of a combined air and amphibious operation. consists of 2,500 paratroopers. Paratroopers began landing on top of the surprise Japanese defenders who began to emerge from tunnels and bunkers after the bombing had stopped. Japanese troops fired on the paratroopers as they floated down, and a number were killed by parachute failures or had hard landings. Twelve U.S. soldiers died from the jumps. The Japanese quickly rallied and began to fight back with their customary ferociousness, and later on the morning of the 16th threatened to overrun the 503rd's tenuous foothold on topside. The paratroopers slowly destroyed Japanese machine gun positions and beat off small-scale counterattacks for two days. The American amphibious landing commenced just as the 503rd landed on topside. The 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, came ashore at San Jose Point on Black Beach. In spite of the heavy pre-landing barrage, mortar, machine gun and small arms fire meet the men as they hit the shore. Objective is to push across the 500-yard wide neck of the island and make contact with the paratroopers on the plateau. is heavily mined, and most of the first vehicles to land are damaged. Japanese resistance was fierce, but the American troops pushed inland, mostly fighting Japanese using tunnels. A Jap machine gun nest hidden in a cave behind an old refrigerator plant. A 50 caliber machine gun and a Tank 75 finally knock it out. The objective was Melinta Hill, and the 34th managed to isolate the hill. U.S. tanks were landed, and coupled with flamethrowers, proved devastating against Japanese tunnels and bunkers. On the 18th of February, the Japanese launched a major assault on the 503rd's 2nd Battalion, which had two companies holding positions at Wheeler Point. At 10 p.m. that night, 500 Japanese Marines, among the best troops available on the island, emerged from tunnels and launched a full-scale Banzai charge in an effort to overrun the 503rd's positions. The Americans managed to hold the Japanese at bay for three hours, killing at least 250. Wheeler Point was quickly rechristened Banzai Point by the 503rd. Infantry and tank units of Company I, 503rd Paratroop Regiment, mop up on Corregidor. Jap sniper and machine gun pockets in the hills near Breakwater Point are destroyed by our troops moving against strong enemy resistance. 
Guns from American destroyers pour shells into the area to cover the paratroopers' advance. Machine gun fire reduces Jap positions. Troops of Company F, 503rd Paratroop Regiment, close in on a fortified artillery magazine. An 81 millimeter mortar fires smoke shells on a Jap strong point to identify the target for bombing. Low flying planes strafe the enemy. The 34th Infantry Regiment was also fighting off repeated Japanese counterattacks at Melinta Hill. For eight days, the riflemen and tanks battered away at dug-in Japanese defenders and beat off several Banzai charges, killing over 300 Japanese troops. A blown-up powder magazine destroyed by the Japs to halt our advance. Companies A and B of the 1st Battalion on a patrol mission were trapped and wiped out in the explosion. A knocked-out U.S. tank. Troops of the 3rd Battalion moving up to replace the 1st Battalion pass American ambulances wrecked in the explosion. Fire direction center of a parachute field artillery battalion controlling gunfire on the eastern part of Corregidor. A heavy artillery barrage prepares the way for the infantry advance. Patrols move along the beach at Rock Point, cleaning out enemy pockets in caves and cliffs. By the 23rd, organized Japanese resistance was almost over. The last pockets were eliminated on the 26th of February 1945. The 503rd Parachute Regimental Combat Team suffered 169 killed and 531 wounded, while the 34th Infantry Regiment had 38 killed and 153 wounded. Of the 6,700 Japanese on the island at the beginning of the invasion, only 50 survived to be captured by US forces. Incredibly, another 20 remained hidden until after the war, the last Japanese soldiers emerging on the 1st of January 1946 to surrender. PT boats cross Manila Bay to Corregidor, bringing General Douglas MacArthur to the island for flag-raising ceremonies. General MacArthur is met at the dock by Colonel George M. Jones, commanding officer of the 503rd Regiment. inspecting the large coastal defense guns at Wheeler Battery overlooking the entrance to Manila Bay. The general enters the west end of Malinta Tunnel. General MacArthur arrives at the site of the flag raising ceremony near the ruins of the officers quarters. During the ceremony, General MacArthur cited the 503rd Regimental Combat Team for brilliant action on Corregidor and presented Colonel Jones with a Distinguished Service Cross. The American flag is raised on Corregidor for the first time since 22nd March 1942. In his speech, General MacArthur called the recapture of Corregidor one of the most brilliant exploits in all military history and enjoined the troops to hoist the colors and let no enemy ever haul them down. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details below. You can also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.